about having my fortune read. Oh, Lowell, relax. It's just good nature and fun. There's nothing to worry about. Oh, tortured souls of eternal darkness <laughs> open my eyes that I might see. <gasps> what? It's the card of good fortune. Oh, God, I know it. <laughs> what does it mean? It means that a stranger is going to bring you unexpected good fortune. What is this? A meeting of the mindless? What's going on here? I'm rehearsing for the VFW Carnival. I, Madame Zorko, am working the fortune-telling booth. I hold the key to the future. What question do you seek the answer to? Do I look like an idiot? Well, Madame Zorko, shall we see? <laughs> Philharmonic. He is a genius. I can't let him see me like this. I look like a waitress. Here he comes. Nicely done. Hey, guys. Guess who was on my flight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know Edward Tinsdale, the conductor of the Minneapolis Philharmonic. No. Popo the Clown. Popo! So, and Jen Lake, remember, Brian? He's the watch it all the time. Where is he? Are his pants lit up? God, what I wouldn't do to play in an orchestra like his. Popo's ragtime band? No, the Minneapolis Philharmonic. Well, maybe he needs a cellist. No, he mostly uses cowbells and kazoos. <laughs> well, why don't you go and introduce yourself to him? Oh, I can't meet him like this. I smell like egg salad. This is your chance. Seize the moment. Oh, how do I talk to a legend? I mean, what do I say? I don't know. How about, uh, who's your favorite composer? Oh, right, Joe. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Einstein. What's your favorite number? <laughs> I can't ask him something that simplistic. I know. I'll ask him if he thinks Schoenberg's dodecaphonic scale is the musical fraud of the 20th century or just a viable expression of non conventional polytonality. That shouldn't be too hard to work into the conversation. Wish <laughs> him luck. Good luck. Okay. Excuse me, uh, Mr. Tinsdale? Yes. Who's your favorite composer? I am. <laughs> That's a good one. I wasn't joking. No, you, of course, you weren't. Why don't I just go away now? Fine. Thanks, Joe. Poor Helen, who knows when she'll get another opportunity like that. Hey, 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 maybe sooner than you think. Ah. Whoa. I want you to lose this. What? what? Oh, Brian, what are you doing? This is Tinsdale's bag. I want Lowell to lose it. Did I miss some kind of policy memo? Shh, Joe, Joe, Joe. We're not actually going to lose the bag in an hour. Helen will bring Tinsdale's bag. We'll be so overjoyed to get it, we'll have to give her an audition. Joe, you're the boss. What do you say? Lose it. All right, I'll lose it. But it goes against every fiber of my being. I just might have to hug you. No, no, I just no, might no, have to no, I mean, no. uh, Excuse me, one of you. I have uh, two bags. There's one here. One's missing. Is there more luggage outside? No. I'm afraid your bag is lost. <laughs> The string parts with all the Boeings for next week's concert are in that bag. I can't possibly duplicate them. Excuse, excuse me, Mr. Tinsdale, my name is Joe Hackett. I run Sandpiper Air. I just got off the phone with Logan. They found your bag. Oh. It'll be here in an hour. I'll have it delivered to you as soon as it arrives. You have no idea how Relax, important... Relax, Edward. It's our honeymoon. I'm sure we can find something to do to pass the time. Yes, I, I suppose you're right. <laughs> an hour? You have my word. We're staying at 480 Madison Road. We'll be there. Don't hurry. <laughs> You, you, you're going to bring Tinsdale's bag, and when you ask for an audition, don't take no for an answer. No, Brian, I can't Ellen, that. Ellen, you know what they say about the squeaky wheel? If you don't watch yourself, this egg salad is going to be your future. Has this been sitting out? All right, I'll do it. 
If you're nothing else, to apologize and to show him that the people on this island aren't just a bunch of unsophisticated, simple-minded boobs. Hey, some guy's in a parking lot juggling clamshells. Were his pants lit up? Yeah, I think they were. Bobo! <laughs> Sir, you dropped this wallet out on the tarmac. Oh, come on. Thank you. Oh, uh, just a moment. There you go. Wow, 20 bucks. Thanks. Hey, hey. Did you see that? Your prediction came true. You said a stranger was going to bring a little good fortune. I did. Yes. I, I am good. <laughs> hey, uh, Faye. How'd you like to try reading my fortune? If you'd like. Hey. Oh, tortured soul. Just cut to the chase, Madam Wacko. <laughs> what? 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 Uh, what? What was that? What was that? Nothing to say. I forgot to shuffle. Mm. <laughs> what, 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 what? Boy, I'm not feeling very well. Why don't we do this tomorrow? You saw something, Faye. No, now, what was it? No, 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 nothing. Absolutely nothing. It wasn't the death card. <gasps> it was too. No. It was a death card. No, no, no. It was the um, uh, cheese card. <laughs> The cheese card. The cheese card, it means, um, it means you're going to buy more airplanes and become an even bigger cheese around here. Faye, I don't like this supernatural stuff. Are you, uh, you telling me the truth? Of course I am. You have nothing to worry about. Good. Good. Oh, Faye, you still need to ride home from work? No. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I feel like walking. You're going to walk six miles in heels? You know what they say. No pain, no gain. <laughs> So, Helen, about ready for your adventure? As ready as I'll ever be. Uh, hey, Lowell, where's Tinsdale's bag? I don't know how to tell you guys this, but the bag's gone. It's really lost. What? Are you kidding? Yes, I am. <laughs> uh, look at Schumer. You're gonna love it. Lowell, this isn't the right bag. It isn't? Uh-oh. Got you again. Uh, two for two. Goes nothing. Good luck. Bye, Helen. Wait a minute. Where's my cello? It was sitting here just a second ago. Ta da! Oh, somebody stop me. I'm a pistol today. Hurry back, honey. Oh, I will, sweetheart. <laughs> yes? They tell him chapel from the airport. I have your suitcase. Ah, thank you. You probably noticed that I have a cello with me. Is that what that is? Young lady, I'm on my honeymoon. Don't tell me you're here to audition for me. Oh, please, Mr. Tinsdale. I've studied this instrument since it was taller than I was. It is my dream to play in an orchestra like yours. It's all I've ever cared about. I know this is an incredible imposition, but if you don't mind, I, I have to find out if I'm good enough. Let's just assume that you are. Oh, no, please, please. I have to play for you. You're not going to leave until I listen to you, are you? I can live eight days without water. <laughs> Come in. Play. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm. No problem. <laughs> Uh, Ch uh, Chapel, mm -hmm. your technique is poor. Your playing lacks passion, but your understanding of the music is utterly superficial. <laughs> I don't think you're ever going to play in an orchestra of any consequence. My advice to you would be to abandon the cello, get on with your life. Honey, I'm waiting. And I will get on with mine. But I've practiced for over 20 years. I mean, this is my dream. If I'm not a cellist, I'm... I'm a waitress. Then be the best darn waitress you can be. <laughs> on his honeymoon, what was I thinking? There's really nothing I could have done to have pleased him. You could have joined them. <laughs> it's the most humiliating experience of my life. I'll never forget the look on his face. It was a combination of pity and loathing. Clothing? I've seen that look before. There it is. <laughs> Hel Helen. Leave me alone, John. We go eat some cookie dough. Burns me up. How does that jerk conductor get off smashing someone's hopes? Uh, well, I don't know, Joey. I mean, haven't you ever wondered about Helen? If she's really that good, what is she still doing here, huh? 
How can you say that? Well, I'm just trying to be realistic, is all. You're the one who's talking about the squeaky wheel getting the grease. And apparently a squeaky wheel is exactly what she sounds like. <laughs> as bad as Tinsdale. Oh, hey, 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 hey! Now, I like Helen as much as you do, but sometimes in life, you gotta know when to cut your losses. Uh, and you know when? I'm here, aren't I? It's so bad for Helen. It's a sad thing when a dream dies. Without a dream, life is an empty, endless slog through a wasteland of pain and despair. And then you find out Papo doesn't really make that funny noise when you sock him in the stomach. Uh, have you ever had a dream, Lowell? Yes. What was it? This is it. No, I meant... <laughs> and a wonderful dream it is. Oh, boy, thank God you're here. I'm so happy to see you. Why? No reason. Hey, hey. Oh, hey, Lowell. Uh, how's, how's Papo? Well, the doctor gave him a sedative. But I think you'll be okay. Stuffed the pill up his nose and made it come out his ear. Stop, uh, Helen, listen, I was uh, thinking about what happened with Tinsdale. Now, do you remember that old expression about falling off a horse? What do you do? You shoot the miserable beast through the eyes. No, you get right back on. I, th I think you should go back out there and play for him again. What, are you out of your freaking mind? There's no way I'm going through that agony again. Well, that doesn't sound like you. Helen Chapel, I know, is not a quitter. The Helen Chapel I know can take it on the chin and still come back. The Helen Chapel I know does not take no for an answer. Great. Send her. Hurry back, honey. Give it a rest, will you? <laughs> yes? Hello. I don't know if you remember me, but... Uh, I got the bag, wait, thank you. Wait, wait, wait. This isn't about the bag. That's something I want to say to you. I don't care who you are. It doesn't give you the right to smash someone's hopes. When they lay it all out there for you to judge, the least you can do is be kind. This would be about the girl with the cello. Honey, I'm waiting. Look, I know this is a bad time. No, it's perfect. Come in. <laughs> I, uh... I was being kind. I told her the truth. The momentary sting is easier to bear than wasting your life chasing a dream that can never be. Uh, who are you to tell her she's no good? Selecting musicians is a large part of what I do. I've auditioned, gee, thousands over the years. <laughs> I've played the piano since I was five, the violin since I was seven. After graduating from Juilliard, I was picked by George Sell out of a thousand candidates to assist him at the Cleveland Orchestra. Since then, I have conducted the Amsterdam Concertgebouw, the London Philharmonic, the National Symphony Orchestra. In 1985, I conducted the Berlin Philharmonic in a series of recordings of the complete symphonies of Shostakovich, for which I have received numerous awards. I hold honorary doctor of music degrees from Harvard, Cambridge, the Sorbonne. I sit on the board of the National Endowment for the Arts. And just last month, the Italian Academy awarded me the silver baton. But not the gold. <laughs> there is no gold. So? <laughs> Touché. Look, I may not be an expert on music, but, but I know a thing or two about flying. Let me tell you a story. Years ago, there was a guy who dreamed about becoming a pilot. On his first lesson, his instructor told him he didn't have what it took, but he didn't quit because flying was his dream. And not only did that man eventually get to fly, but he became the first American in space. And that man was John Glenn. You mean Wally Shira? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was John Glenn. <laughs> John Glenn was first man in orbit. Wally Shira was oh, first man in space. Wait, the order was Dog Monkey Glenn. Dog Monkey Shira. Dog Monkey Dog Glenn. Dog Monkey Shira. It was Alan Shepard. <laughs> right, that's right here. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, all I'm saying is, please, don't ruin my friend's life. She was probably just nervous. Give her another chance. Yeah. Perhaps I was a little hasty the other evening. You tell your friend that I'd be happy to listen to her play again sometime. Really? Yeah, really. Brian, bring her in. <laughs> We could even do it now, if you'd like. I apologize for this, Mr. Tinsdale. They made me do it. I don't question your judgment. If anyone would know, it's you. I'm so sorry. Miss Chapel? Yes? It's entirely possible that I owe you the apology. Whoa! Oh, hey, uh, you must be Mrs. Tinsdale, huh? <laughs> Bravo, maestro. <laughs> Won't you play for me again, please? Really? Yes. Uh, are you sure? Because I think I could play much better than I did yesterday. I was very flustered Yes. Well, I wasn't very flustered, but I was pretty flustered. That's why I think I'm sure. Well, I'm really sure that I think I could play much better because I'm not as flustered. Play the damn thing! Why don't I do that? Don't you 
finished playing. And he just stared at her, kind of like the way you stare at a bug after it's splattered on your windshield. And then he told her she played better the first time. Poor Helen. I'm worried about her. She must be totally devastated. Good morning. Isn't it a beautiful day? God, it kills me to see her like this. Oh, are you okay? Oh, I'm wonderful. You're not bothered by what happened? Yes, I was. As a matter of fact, I cried myself to sleep last night. But then, when I woke up this morning, I did what I've done every day for the past 20 years of my life. I dragged myself out of bed to practice. But after last night, I realized there was no reason to. So, I watched the sunrise. I went on a walk, and then I took a hot bubble bath, and I still had time to read the newspaper over breakfast. I figured it out. Practicing two hours a day, I have put over 10,000 hours of my life into that cello. Do you realize how many hours that is? Unless this is a trick question, I'd say 10,000. So now, I don't have to waste any more time practicing, hoping, wondering if I'm good enough. I'm not, and I know it. You really are okay with this. I've made my piece. And now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go make some egg salad. And some damn good egg salad. Oh, and if anybody wants this, it'll be out by the trash can. Terrible. It's all your fault, Faye. I haven't slept. I haven't eaten. You got me spooked, gypsy woman. You gotta tell me what's gonna happen to me. Are you sure you can handle this? I have to know. Oh, there it is again, the queen of hearts, the death card. God, I knew it. I knew... Wait a minute. The queen of hearts is not the death card, Faye. The ace of spades is a death card. Even I know that. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> I'll be darned. There's the man that set me free. I'm going to go thank him. <clears throat> Excuse me, Mr. Tinsdale. There's something that I need to tell you. Actually, Miss Chappell, upon reflection, there's something I would like to say to you. Well, I just... I may have left you the other evening with the impression that your musical ability is non-existent. That is not quite true. I believe that you possess a glimmer of talent. A glimmer? Yes. The tiniest of glimmers, but it is there. No, you cannot be saying this because, see, I just got my life back. Of course, it means you're going to have to practice four, maybe five hours a day religiously. But I believe that there's a chance that over the next few years... You told me I stink. Well, but you don't. Oh, yes, I do. Completely and totally. P.U. You said no self-respecting orchestra would have me. I exaggerated. I apologize. No, you can't be saying this. You said that I didn't have a chance. But, but you do. Well, take it back. But... Take it back. <laughs> Joe, you heard him, didn't you? He didn't mean it. He didn't mean it. <laughs> well, Helen, if it makes you feel any better, I've always doubted your talent, and I still do. <laughs> well, I'm just trying to comfort her. You're gonna be all right? What am I gonna do? I'm cursed with a glimmer of talent. I'm gonna be chained to that instrument for the rest of my life. Goodbye, walks on the beach. Goodbye, fingernails. Goodbye, life. She's gonna be all right. She'll be fine. I don't know. I've never seen her like this before. You don't think she's gonna do anything desperate, do you? I'm afraid so. 